right, so today let's talk about diuretics. Diuretics are our volume depleters. We're going to use diuretics to decrease the workload that is on the heart. So post-MI patients, they have an injured heart, the congestive heart failure patient, which or just maybe people that have old hearts, so our you know elderly persons, those CHF and older hearts, they're weaker. So we're going to decrease the workload on the heart by decreasing the volume diuretics. All right, so we have four main types of diuretics out there. We have the loop diuretic. Loop diuretics are your heavy hitters. They are used all the time. Ferrosamide, they end in mide, but ferrosamide or Lasix, the number one heavy hitter diuretic of all time, that is also a potassium wasting diuretic. So that means along with the fluid that gets shifted out, along goes the potassium with it. So we'll get back to some of the um, education and side effects and things in just a minute. The next one, the number two in line, thiazides, hydrochlorothiazide. Those are sort of like in football, first string, second string. Thiazides are your second string diuretic. Again, it is a potassium wasting diuretic. So along with fluid, out goes the potassium with the thiazides first. So loop and thiazides, both potassium wasting diuretics. Need to know that, definitely need to know that. All right, so number three in line. Not quite up to par with the top two, but still in line. Those are um, potassium sparing diuretics, and those are like aldactone, um, um, spironolactone, and they end in tone. Those ones end in tone. And they block aldosterone, and if you remember aldosterone, that's it, we're in the kidneys now. So sodium is in the kidneys, and if we block aldosterone, then we allow that sodium to exit the kidneys. And water always follows sodium. You know, we eat too many, too much. It's got salt in it. We retain fluid because um, water follows the sodium. So when we eat that salt, the water like clings to us. So the same thing when we can get rid of the sodium out of the kidneys as the sodium leaves so exits the water too. So that's sort of how they work. But the good part there is they are potassium sparing. Uh, a lot of times you see these potassium sparing diuretics given to persons that have ascites, um, secondary to uh, liver failure or cirrhosis of the liver. You'll see uh, persons that have that big pregnant looking belly, that ascites, and we'll give them these um, potassium sparing diuretics. Okay, so number four in line, last but not least, and that is the osmotic um, diuretic. Mannitol would be that. Um, those are really the last line of diuretics. Um, kind of a little more difficult to give. I can't even remember giving one, but probably somewhere back in time, maybe ICU or ER, somewhere on death the ER, probably ICU may have given that. But with um, the osmotics or mannitol, we always have to give that with a filter in the system, in the IV. It's always given IV and we have to give it with a filter because it can crystallize. Really important to remember that. Mannitol can crystallize. Um, if your person starts complaining of headache, chills, need to be watching out for problems that could have happened with the delivery of the mannitol. All right, so moving on, let's go back and talk a little bit about things to remember about these diuretics and when we're given them. Okay, so we talked about loop diuretics and thiazides being non-potassium sparing. It means the potassium is out in the potty with the fluid, okay? That's where the potassium is. We need potassium in the body, so we're going to increase, give education to increase the patient's diet, potassium. Well, what foods have potassium? Everybody knows bananas, but bananas and apricots and oranges, raisins, um, all your green leafy vegetables have lots of potassium. Uh, meats have potassium, so remember there's a variety of things. It's not just bananas. Um, but we're going to increase their diet as well as you'll see a lot of these people that are on long-term um, diuretic therapy, they'll also be taking potassium, um, either um, usually by mouth. Okay, we're also going to be keeping up with the person's I know. We're going to take in. What comes in should 
equal what goes out. So we're going to have that person on fluid restrictions because we're getting rid of a lot of excess fluid. So we don't want them taking in any more to be retained. So we also, along with that, need to be doing day weights or something that I don't know why, but nurses hate to do daily weights. Do them. Do them. If you don't have a daily weight on the patient, you don't know what it is. You have to take the daily weight. The other thing to look for is those fluids and electrolytes. You gotta be watching that lab work, making sure you're tracking that lab work, that they are in good fluid and electrolyte balance because they can get in an unbalance really quickly with diuretics. Um, Vital signs. You're monitoring vital signs because when you start these people on these diuretics, especially new to diuretics, you need to be really careful that you're watching blood pressure. As that fluid goes out, we're decreasing volume, so the blood pressure goes down. Heart rate goes up. Okay, so the heart is beating harder because the blood pressure is down. So you need to watch for that. We always give our diuretics, if they're one a day, once a day, we give those in the morning. You do not want to give these in the evening. The reason behind that, the people are going to be getting up to the potty. And when they get up in the morning to the potty, they can see their surroundings. If they get up at night, they're going to stumble over things. So it's a safety issue with giving it in the evening because we know they're going to be getting up to the bathroom more and um, people don't turn lights on and they trip and stumble and fall and we have all another whole set of um, things to worry about at that point. Um, it is going to increase this person's risk of orthostatic hypotension and that is when they change position quickly like go from lying to standing quickly that their blood pressure bottoms out and they get syncope or they get dizzy and they fall out on us. So what do we do for that? We educate the person. We tell them to go from lying to sitting, sit there a few moments before they stand and to be sure that they, when they stand, that they feel okay before they start off across the room walking. Um, when you are using um, ACE inhibitors, and we talked a little bit about ACE inhibitors uh, back last week or maybe the week before last. Um, with potassium, potassium sparing diuretics, so that would be those um, aldactone, that sort of thing. Watch out for the opposite of what we've been talking about, hyperkalemia, because those are potassium sparing. We're using ACE inhibitors. So we have done a couple of things here to the heart, and by doing that, um, we may cause a spike in the person's potassium level. So you need to watch out for that. Um, also remember just on the sidetrack here that NSAIDs, your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, will decrease the effect that the diuretics have. So if the person is also taking, um, you know, Motrin or ibuprofen, then we need to also educate them that their diuretics may not have the same effect. So just be aware of those things and I'll see you next time.